What's up guys, welcome back to this series on reinforcement learning. Over the next couple of videos, we're going to be building and playing our very first game with reinforcement learning. We're going to use the knowledge we gained last time about Q learning to teach an agent how to play a game called Frozen Lake. We'll be using Python and OpenAI's Gem Toolkit to develop our algorithm. So let's get to it. So as mentioned, we'll be using Python and OpenAI Gem to develop our reinforcement learning algorithm. The Gem library is a collection of environments that we can use with the reinforcement learning algorithms we develop. Gem has a ton of environments, ranging from simple text-based games to Atari games like Breakout and Space Invaders. The library is intuitive to use and simple to install. Just run pip install gem and you're good to go. Really easy as that. The link to Jim's installation instructions, requirements, and documentation is included in the description. So go ahead and get that installed now because we'll need it in just a moment. We'll be making use of Jim to provide us with an environment for a simple game called Frozen Lake. We'll then train an agent to play the game using Q Learning, and then we'll get a playback of how the agent does after being trained. So let's jump into the details for Frozen Lake. Wait, Frozen Lake? Like the Frozen Lake in... Sorry, but no, the Frozen Lake we'll be playing won't have us fighting any White Walkers. And seriously, if no one gets this reference, then you're spending way too much time learning deep learning and not enough time vegging out on, well, let me know in the comments if you know where this scene is from. All right, let's get into the real details for the actual Frozen Lake game we'll be playing. I've grabbed the description of the game directly from Jim's website. Let's read through it together, but with an accent, you know, to add dramatic effect. Winter is here. You and your friends were tossing around a frisbee at the park when you made a wild throw that left the frisbee out in the middle of the lake. The water is mostly frozen, but there are a few holes where the ice has melted. If you step into one of those holes, you'll fall into the freezing water. At this time, there's an international frisbee shortage, so it's absolutely imperative that you navigate across the lake and retrieve the disc. However, the ice is slippery, so you won't always move in the direction you intend. The surface of the lake is described using a grid like you see here. Well, that was fun. This grid is our environment where S is the agent's starting point, and it's considered safe for the agent to be here. F represents the frozen surface and is also safe. H represents a hole, and if our agent steps in a hole in the middle of a frozen lake, well, yeah, you know, that's not good. Finally, G represents the goal, which is the space on the grid where the prized frisbee is located. The agent can navigate left, right, up, and down, and the episode ends when the agent reaches the goal or falls in a hole. It receives a reward of one if it reaches the goal and zero otherwise. So pretty much our agent has to navigate the grid by staying on the frozen surface without falling into any holes until it reaches the frisbee. If it reaches the frisbee, it wins with a reward of plus one. If it falls in a hole, it loses and receives no points for the entire episode. Cool, all right, let's jump into the code. First, we're importing all the libraries we'll be using. Not many, really. We have NumPy, Jim, Random, Time, and Clear Output from IPython's display. Next, to create our environment, we just call gem.make and pass a string of the name of the environment we want to set up. We'll be using the environment called frozenlake-v0. All of the environments with their corresponding names you can use are available on Jim's website. With this env object, we can do several things. We can query for information about the environment, we can sample states and actions, retrieve rewards, and have our agent navigate the frozen lake. We're now going to construct our Q table and initialize all the Q values to zero for each state action pair. Remember, the number of rows in the table is equivalent to the size of the state space in the environment, and the number of columns is equivalent to the size of the action space. 
We can get this information using env.observationspace.in and env.actionspace.in. We can then use this information to build the queue table and fill it with zeros. If you're foggy about queue tables at all, be sure to check out the earlier videos where we covered all the details you need. All right, so here's what our queue table looks like. Now we're going to create and initialize all the parameters needed to implement the queue learning algorithm. Let's step through each of these. First, with num episodes, we define the total number of episodes we want our agent to play during training. Then, with max steps per episode, we define the maximum number of steps that our agent is allowed to take within a single episode. So, if by the 100th step the agent hasn't reached the frisbee or fallen through a hole, then the episode will terminate with the agent receiving zero points. Next, we set our learning rate, which was mathematically shown using the symbol alpha in the previous video. Then we also set our discount rate as well, which was represented with the symbol gamma previously. Now the last four parameters are all related to the exploration exploitation trade-off we talked about last time in regards to the epsilon greedy strategy. We're initializing our exploration rate that we previously referred to as epsilon to one, and we set the max exploration rate to one and a min exploration rate to 0.01. The max and min are just bounds to how large and how small our exploration rate can be. Lastly, we set the exploration decay rate to 0.01 .01 to determine the rate at which the exploration rate will decay. Now, all of these parameters can change. These are parameters you'll want to play with and tune yourself to see how they influence and change the performance of the algorithm when we get there. Speaking of which, in the next video, we're going to jump right into the code that will write to implement the actual Q-learning algorithm for playing Frozen Lake. For now, go ahead and make sure your environment is set up with Python and Jim and that you've got the initial code written that we went through so far. Also, come check out the corresponding blog for this video on deeplister.com to make sure you didn't miss anything. And while you're at it, check out the exclusive perks and rewards available for members of the Deep Lizard Hive Mind. Let me know in the comments if you were able to get everything up and running, and leave us a thumbs up to let us know you're learning. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence, and I'll see you in the next one. Well, that agent lost. <laughs>